Hey everyone, Brad Palladini with Palladini Law. Today we're gonna go over the CP523 notice from the IRS. Uh, we're gonna cover what it is, why you got it, and what your options are after you receive it. So if you got the CP523 notice, you probably got it by certified mail or you should have gotten it by certified mail. Um, anytime you get a letter from the IRS by certified mail, it's pretty important. I mean, anything they send is important, but especially by certified mail. So what is the CP523 notice? It's basically the IRS notifying you that they intend to terminate the installment agreement that you're on. So this means that at some point previously, you had set up a payment arrangement and the IRS now intends to terminate that agreement. So why would they do that? There could be several reasons. Um, one would be if you filed a return recently and you had an additional balance due that generally will terminate the installment agreement. So if you were on a payment plan for 2016, 2017, 2018, and you just filed your 2021 taxes and you owed an extra five grand, that could be why the IRS is terminating the installment agreement because they only allow you to be on one installment agreement at a time that has to encompass all of the years. Now, lately the IRS has been trying to just automatically include new liabilities in the payment plan, so you don't have to go through the process of reestablishing it. But in a lot of situations, they're just not able to do that, and so they terminate your installment agreement and you gotta set up the whole thing again. So that could be reason number one. Reason number two is you missed a filing date. So uh, one of the requirements of being on an installment agreement, in addition to paying all the taxes on time, you also have to file all of your tax returns on time. So if you're on an installment agreement for previous years, but you filed maybe 2021 late, that's another reason why it could default. Um, one additional reason could just be uh, if you were on like some sort of partial pay installment agreement, so basically, let's say you owed you know, $100,000 to the IRS and you were able to get them to agree to $100 a month. That would be a partial pay installment agreement because you know, the IRS only has 10 years to collect and they're not gonna get 100 grand at $100 a month. Um, but on a partial pay installment agreement, every year, two years, sometimes longer, the IRS will request updated financial information to see if you can afford to pay anything else. And if you ignored that letter, or maybe you didn't get it, um, the IRS will just terminate the installment agreement that you're on and require you to get a new one. Now, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me that the IRS would just terminate the installment agreement if you've been making the payments. I mean, $100 a month is better than $0 a month, but you know, uh, I don't make the rules, the IRS does. And so uh, in this situation, they just terminate your installment agreement. So those are some of the reasons why the IRS could be sending this letter. What are your options for kind of fixing it so your installment agreement isn't terminated? If you accrued a new liability, ideally you would just pay that in full and then you could call and just basically get on the same payment plan that you were. So again, if you're on a payment plan for 2015 through 2020 and you file 2021 and you owe two grand, Ideally, you, you would pay that two grand, call them up, and you know reset the installment agreement. I would imagine if it's gotten this far, you probably can't afford to pay whatever additional liability is due. In that case, you could renegotiate the installment agreement, right? So you could include the new liability with all of the old stuff and set up the plan again. Now, depending on what type of installment agreement you're on, and there's a few different options, you may have to provide financial information to kind of show what your income is, what your expenses are, and you know what your asset situation looks at. Or it might be as simple as just calling and uh, lumping it into the old agreement. You probably will have to pay a little bit more. Um, if you're doing a uh, like a streamlined installment agreement, because that's based on the number of months you have to pay it. Um, but it's possible that you know you could get on a plan for the same amount that you owed before. If you filed with an additional liability and now you know the tax bill has really skyrocketed, 
you could look at maybe doing an offer and compromise where uh, instead of paying them monthly, you decide, hey, I just want to settle this thing. Let's see if we can come up with some sort of lump sum um, and get them to waive the remaining balance. So that would be another option. You do have appeal rights when they terminate your installment agreement. So you can file what's called a cap uh, it's collection appeal procedure and basically you would get a hearing. It's very informal. It's just a phone call with an appeals officer and you can kind of make your case as to why they should not terminate your installment agreement. Now, um, caps have uh, not a super high success rate. They're pretty tough to do. Um, but if you feel like you're out of options or you just want to, you know, get somebody on a call, make your case and see if you can convince them, you know, a cap could be a good opportunity uh, to do that. Um, if you defaulted your installment agreement because you didn't file a tax return, you definitely want to make sure you get that filed as soon as possible because you will not be able to either, you know, renew the old installment agreement or get on a new installment agreement without being current on your filing. It's one of the requirements of being on installment agreement. So you want to make sure you get that return filed as soon as possible um, and then call them to see what can be done about the liability. No matter like what option you choose, the most important thing I think to take away is that you have to do something, right? Because if the IRS terminates your installment agreement and you're no longer on a payment plan, that means they're going to take collection action against you. So that could be a wage garnishment if you're a W-2 employee. That could be a bank levy where they just reach into your bank account and take whatever they'd like to satisfy the liability. If you're a business, um, they could send a letter to customers and basically say, hey, customer, instead of you know paying this business any money that you owe them, pay it directly to us. And then when that happens, it just wreaks havoc in the business. So all of that can be avoided really just by maintaining contact with them and working with them to uh, resolve the issue. It's really hard to get them on the phone sometimes. I know it's a really frustrating process. I've spoken to a lot of taxpayers lately who have been, you know, really trying to resolve their tax issues, but the IRS doesn't make it as easy as maybe uh, it should be. And, you know, it's kind of a huge bureaucracy and it can be very frustrating to you know, renegotiate payment plans or establish your first payment plan. Um, if you have any additional questions about the CP 523 notice, put a comment in, let me know what it is and I can make a new video to address it or uh, just answer you in the comment section. I'm hoping to do a bunch of new videos shortly. It's kind of my commitment, early commitment for 2023. Um, so if there's any topics that you'd like to discuss, um, let me know. Otherwise, we will be back soon with a new video. Thanks.